Hello and welcome back to my channel. I used to talk about plants a whole lot on my channel, but I haven't in a while because everything's been closed for like however many months now and I haven't really acquired any new plants. And without anything new, I just feel like I don't have anything new to tell you. Um, but someone requested that I do another video talking about my plants, so that's what we're going to do. Today I'm going to take you through the remaining plants, the ones that I haven't killed yet. Um, and just kind of show you the collection that I have right now. And then I did do an order um, for more plants from a place I've never ordered from before. I only ordered two for myself, a little tiny aloe vera and a little tiny string of pearls. Um, and then there's a plant for my sister and a plant for my friend in there as well. Um, so we'll, we'll open that order when, when it gets here as well. So we're gonna go through the plants that I have now. If there is a plant that I've had in a past video and it's not in this opening tour, I don't have it anymore. Odds are it died. <laughs> I am in so many ways a plant noob, even though I've been into plants for about two years now, I still don't know what I'm doing. I'm still learning as I'm going. I'm still, you know, I tend to be an overwaterer. That's why all my plants are so close to the plant light and I have them all in terracotta to try to combat my own overwateringness. Um, but I still mess up sometimes. The two plant deaths that occurred that really upset me is I had this big, beautiful fatsia. I don't know what variegation it was or whatever but it was a fatsia and yes it looked like a big marijuana plant but it wasn't and um my friend Alyssa, whenever she would come over you know back in the olden days when we were allowed to have people over she would always go nice pot plant but it's not a pot plant um but i was really proud of myself because that plant was doing really well and then all of a sudden like it had two main stems and the one stem just started turning brown and wilting and it like completely died off so i i cut it off but I cut it off too close to the dirt, and then what happened was the next time I watered the plant, that little nubbin that was left molded, and it, like, infected the other half of the plant, and I didn't notice it in time, so that, that fatsy had died, and I'm really upset about it. And then another one that you guys probably remember that has died is my string of pearls. That's why I ordered a new one. I don't really know what happened to that one. It turned, like, brown and, like, crispy. But it doesn't seem like me to not water it enough, so I really genuinely don't know what happened to that. It died. <laughs> so I got rid of it. So we're going to try string of pearls again. Usually I try to three strikes with a plant, you know, three strikes and then I just give up. Um, so I've, I've had three, three strikes with baby tears at this point, but I'm only on strike two with string of pearls. So let's, 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 let, let's hope that this works. But yeah, like I said, any plant that I used to have that you don't see in this video, it's because I don't have any more. Okay, so we're going to start over here at Roger's Terrarium. There have been a lot of plant casualties in here, so I mean, that's great. Um, so this snake plant has done absolutely fantastically in this tank ever since I first put it in there. I was worried that it was going to be too humid because snake plants like more dry um, situations. But actually, like, it's even putting out this new leaf here. So, I mean, it really likes it in here. Up at the front here, I had a nerve plant to begin with, I believe. And I killed that. And then I put a baby tears plant here, and I killed that. And then I put another baby tears plant here, and I also killed that. So what you're seeing there that it sort of looks like some kind of mulch or something that is the corpse of the old baby tears i never took it out i figured the isopods will just eat it eventually so it's just still there um the pothos in the back corner here i think it's just a regular golden pothos it was doing really well but lately i don't know like this leaf one of the biggest leaves it has that it came with is turning yellow and kind of dying mind you it's been in here for uh, almost a year at this point, so maybe that's why. And then this spider plant, I really thought I was gonna like it in here, but, I mean, it's still alive, so it's okay. But it's really getting kind of gross. Like, I had to cut off some of the ends. You'll notice some of these ends are quite blunt, because they were really long and brown and straggly, like, like this one. And they just looked awful, so I did have to cut those off. Um, so I'm kind of looking to put a new plant in here. I really wish the baby tears would have taken. Um, that would have been great. Um, if you recall, I did that Tails and Scales order, and in there I bought a Creeping Ficus, because I wanted that in here instead of the Baby Tears. Um, but it came to me and it, it wasn't saveable. Um, so if I can find a local place where I can get a Creeping Ficus, or whatever it's called, um, Ficus Pumula, whatever it's called, um, I would love to put that in there, because that should do really well, better than the Baby Tears, but I did kill the Baby Tears many times. Speaking of Baby Tears, this is another variety of Baby Tears here. My friend Alyssa bought this for me for the terrarium, but it wasn't the same kind of baby tears, so I kind of wanted to see if I could keep it alive separately. And the answer is not really. It looks awful. I think I just don't water it enough. I think it needs more, <laughs> more dampness. Because, like, look at this. This is dry and crackly and gross. I could do better by this, but, I mean, we're trying. And then this, of course, is my string of hearts. Now, my string of hearts doesn't look very good. But it's getting better. Like, look at all the green and the shoots. Like, it's trying. When I first got it, it was full. It was beautiful. I bought it from Studio Foliage, which is a place in uh, 
Point Claire, Quebec. Um, and I bought it online, and it came to me, and it looked great. And then I did, I did it really dirty. I love the idea of it being in this hanging basket, so I think that's kind of helping. And a little while ago, like, honestly, like maybe two months ago, I cut off all the ends because they looked like garbage. And it's only grown all of this greenery recently, so I have high hopes for this uh, stream of hearts coming back. If we move down to my little floor tray, um, this plant, hold on, let me see if I can get my camera to focus. This plant back here, this, um, Philodendron Brazil, I love it. I think we need to repot it in this video, actually, because it's, it's too big for that pot, and I want to amalgamate it with that sort of Philodendron Brazil cutting that I have over here that I got from Tales and Scales at the last reptile convention before the pandemic. Um, so I would like to just put them in the same pot just to kind of get rid of the double pot thing. And this plant, I love it. It lost one of my favorite leaves yesterday. I just, like, barely touched it and it fell off. So I don't know. It, it definitely needs to be wiped down because it's right beside the vacuum. So it, it picks up a lot of the dust from the vacuum. Um, so it needs to be wiped down anyway. So I might as well repot it at the same time. This one here is uh, my Alocasia poly that I think I bought sort of in the middle of summer. It had five big leaves, and one of those leaves had grown uh, in my care. But when I was doing research on the alocasia poly before I bought it, I learned that it can lose all of, if not most, of its leaves in the winter time, and then they'll grow back in the spring and summer. So I was ready for this plant to lose all of its leaves. It's managed to hang on to one, even though this one doesn't look very happy anymore. Um, but it is almost the growing season again, so maybe, maybe more leaves will come back. This down here, I believe, I can never remember the difference. Is it a lemon lime philodendron or a neon pothos? I can't remember. I bought it from Studio Foliage as well. And it's just kick ass. Like, it's been doing so well since I bought it. I really want it to be like one of those big hanging potted plants someday where it's just this beautiful light green foliage that just comes down. And I just love it. I have no complaints about that one. And then this is the Monster Adamsonii that I got in that sort of surprise box, if you will, from the watering can last summer. Um, when I first got it, it had much bigger leaves. And I think because I have it so close to the light, um, it was too bright for those big leaves, so a lot of those big leaves have fallen off. I don't really mind because a whole bunch of smaller leaves have grown in place, and it's actually doing well. I found that monsteras are very easy for me to take care of because they like to be watered, but they're okay if you kind of forget a little bit. So as this plant has grown, it's shot out vines, right? So when it shoots out vines, I cut them off, I propagate them in water, and then once they have roots, I plant them back in here so that eventually we'll get a really full potted plant. But yeah, this monstera adds on the eye. It's just, it's just great. Like, it's doing such a good job for me, um, and it makes me happy that it's doing so well. Now let's go up here. So this rattlesnake calathea, uh, I was watching Plantarina before I uh, started getting to plants. I was doing research, and she said calathea are very temperamental. So I knew that going into it, but I really wanted to try it anyway, and I've actually had a fair amount of luck with this calathea. I've had to cut a few leaves off this winter because they've just kind of shriveled up and looked awful. And honestly, you're supposed to water a calathea with like distilled water or nice water, that sort of thing, or else the edges will turn brown. I do make sure that whatever water this plant gets has been sitting out for 24 hours so that any chlorine or whatever can kind of burn off. Um, but it still gets brown edges sometimes, it's fine. Uh, just know that I thought this was going to be a very difficult plant to take care of when I picked it and I bought it, but I actually have been having a decently easy time with it. This right here is my Dracaena Twister. I put the message out on Instagram for someone to help me identify it, and my friend Tristan did, so thank you, Tristan. Um, I love this plant to begin with. Well, no. When I got it, I thought it was ugly, and then I grew to love it, and now it's giving me a hard time. Like, I had to cut off a couple of brown leaves the other day because they were in the middle. I don't know. Maybe I've just been lax on watering this plant. Um, but I don't know. Like, it's not as happy as it used to be. It looks like it's falling over. I don't really understand what's going on. So this right here is my Dracaena Janet Craig. Fun fact about her, she is actually the first plant that I bought when I decided I wanted to become a plant mom. Um, so the fact that she's still alive is amazing. The other two plants I bought when I decided that um, are long dead, but, but she's still alive, and she's actually started putting out new roots, no, sorry, new leaves lately, which is amazing because I've had her for uh, over a year. I bought her in summer of 2019, I think, and she never put out any new leaves until recently, so I'm hoping she's liking her home now and that she's maybe acclimated. And maybe she'll grow well. This is my tiny baby cactus. I believe it's a, what do they call it? A Hawartha? Something like that. Hawarthia? I'm not totally sure. All I know is I haven't killed it yet. And that is great because I am historically terrible with succulents and cactuses and that sort of thing. Because I overwater them. I used to have a big, beautiful cactus that looked looked like a flower. Not cactus. Succulent that looked like a flower. And um, it 
got really moldy and really died. So I'm glad that I managed to hang on to this one. I've had that one for a fair amount of time too. This beautiful plant right here I, it was sold to me as a Monstera Ginny, which is something I've never heard before and I still haven't heard, so I'm not sure that that's the proper name, but that's what it was sold to me as. It is one big vine. Um, so recently the vine was so big, it was like growing out of the pot, it was falling over, it was a thing, so I chopped it in half and I put the other half in this vase um, so that it can propagate. It's not really doing anything yet because it's only been in here for a couple of days, but hopefully once that grows, I can, you know, sort, sort of repot this and plant them together, and then we'll just keep doing that, similar to what I've been doing with the modern Monstera adansonii, so I can get a big, bushy, beautiful uh, Monstera Ginny or whatever it's called. This plant has been really easy to take care of, I'll be honest with you. All these leaves that look kind of rough, like this one, were there when I got it. Like, all the leaves that I've grown since I've had it actually look really good. So if I can take care of this plant, you can take care of this plant. A plant that I can't take care of is whatever's going on here. So this was sold to me as some sort of begonia. Um, I have recently come to believe that it is actually a peperomia ripple. So great. I love when plants are sold to me incorrectly. Um, <laughs> peperomia ripple don't like to be overwatered, and I'm wondering if that's what I did and that's why it's all falling over, but now when I feel the soil, like, it's completely... You hear that? Completely bone dry. So, I don't know, like, I'm really thinking this plant's gonna have to go soon, because it really just looks awful. It looks so bad. I'm gonna give it another week or so of me not watering it, and see if it bounces back, or if it just continues to die, but I'm thinking this, this plant might be at its end days, even though I've had it for a long time, and I didn't want it to die. It's, it, it's dying anyway. I'm not going to dig it out, but behind my propagation here is my English Ivy. It was much bushier when I first got it, but I, out of all my plants, that one seems to be the most high maintenance. Like, it needs to be watered twice a week, it seems. And if I don't water it twice a week, a whole bunch of the leaves sort of get crispy and die and fall off. Um, so it's growing a whole lot of re really long vines, but I have to start working on filling up the, the inside of it again. So we'll see. I'm kind of learning with that one as I go. But hopefully it does better for me in the future than it has in the past. Beside it, this big pot here is my Hoya Carnosa. Like an absolute rookie, when I first got it, it had these big sort of tendrils that were sticking up from it, like big sticks. You can see where I cut one off there. And that's exactly what I did. I cut them off, and I should not have done that because eventually what I know now is that those big sticks would have grown leaves, and it would have been an extension of the big, beautiful plant. But I'm a total noob, and I cut them off. And I should not have done that. So hopefully, you know, she grows some more. This will be the first um, first growing season, like, completely that I have some of these bigger plants because I bought them in that, uh, the watering can surprise box last year. Um, so hopefully she grows a whole bunch of new fun stuff. And something I learned recently about Hoyas from Wild Fern here on YouTube is that they can absorb nutrients through their leaves. So I bought some orchid fertilizer because that's I bought the exact same stuff that Wild Fern uses and I'm going to try to use that this year on the Hoya as well. Up front here is the um, Philodendron Bra Brazil cutting that I got at um, the Reptile Expo last year at Tails and Scales. Uh, I'm going to pop this in with the other Brazil today I think. And then behind it I have some Lithops, living rock plants. My camera doesn't want to focus on them but these are just some living rocks. Alyssa bought these through because they're her favorite kind of little cactus and she told me to never water it so I've had these since last summer and I have not watered them and so far so good I think. Okay we got to talk about my little Peperomia obtusifolia for a second because one of the first plants that I ever bought with that Dracaena Janet Craig was a Peperomia obtusifolia. You might remember it if you watched my Marvel video last February. I don't know what I did to it. It was doing so well. It was coming back. It looked beautiful. And then, I don't know, maybe I dropped it or something, but it completely died. Like, it was awful. Um, so, I went out and I bought a new one. And this one's been doing really well for me. Like, it's put off a whole bunch of new leaves out of all my plants. I would say this one is the one that has been thriving with me. It's growing really well. I only water it once a week, and it seems to be pretty happy. And I keep it over here pretty much in, <laughs> in very bright light. And it seems to like, seems to like its life. Something that doesn't like its life as much is my um, Venus flytrap. That's what this is called. So it had a bunch of leaves, and it was big and beautiful and, like, lush when I bought it. And all of those leaves, as you can see, have died and fallen off. But it's sprouting up all this new stuff in the middle here. Sorry, my camera keeps trying to focus on Tom Nook. <laughs> that should be better. So as you can see, it's got all these new shoots in the middle. So... I'm not giving up on this one yet. Maybe it's just too bright over here, or I don't know, like my situation wasn't the same as 
what, where it came from, but it's it's coming back. So I have more faith in that than I did originally. I have it in this cute little witchy pot that Alyssa gave me for Christmas. I'm just, I'm excited about that Venus flytrap and I hope it manages to come back from the dead. Another little plant that I have that you'll love. She usually sits in the middle, but I moved her for the video so that it was um, easier for me. This is my little oddish spider plant. She needs to be watered and she needs a little more dirt because of the way she is, like water and dirt fall out the back. I bought her off Wish and then I just put one of the various baby spider plants in this house in her um, and I think she looks great. Um, honestly, it's not a very practical pot for a plant. Like I said, dirt and water and stuff just fall out when you try to water it. It just, it doesn't work out very well, but it's cute and I bought it because it's cute and not because it's practical. If I'm going to show you the good, I might as well also show you the bad and the ugly, right? So let me just grab the worst, the worst thing that I've done. So this plant, <laughs> it was a big, beautiful ficus elastica and now it's just a stick. It was, it had these beautiful thick leaves. I kept it way over there so that it was away from the sun and away from the grow light because, you know, typically darker leaves like less light. I don't know if I overwatered it. I don't, I mean, honestly, let's be honest, it's me. I probably overwatered it. It's got something happening at the top here, so I'm hesitant to throw it out. Like, maybe that's a, I think I'm wishful thinking. I think it's just dead and I need to throw it out and use the pot for something else. But I tried my best, but I failed. <laughs> And then last but certainly not least, out of the plants that are in my room, in my care, I'm not going to dig it out because it's behind all that stuff, but that is my ZZ plant. I am the biggest, like, ZZ plant fangirl pusher on earth, okay? Like, I try to get everyone to buy ZZ plants and to keep them because they're so easy. I've had this ZZ plant since last March, okay? And I've watered it probably four times, and it's doing great. Like, this whole, this whole stem here was barely coming out of the ground when I got it and it's shot up all that much in this time and I just love it. It takes no work. It doesn't need a lot of light. It grows great. I just love it so much. So I actually, um, in the plant order that I did, I bought a ZZ plant for my sister because I want her to have one. Okay, so the unfortunate thing is that my sewing machine is set up on my little card table. So I have to do all of this on my cat scratching book. Um, so we're gonna completely repot my Philodendron Brazils. I'm gonna put my hair up. Okay, so the first thing that they're gonna need, uh, the bigger one for sure, is gonna be a good clean. Yeah, it's so dirty. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this in here. Oh, let me take the pot away. So this handy dandy spray bottle is just water and vinegar. So we're gonna spray this, what's this called? Paper towel. <laughs> now we're just gonna wipe down all the leaves. Because when I tell you this looks like garbage, it truly does. One of the reasons we're doing this now is because it is approaching the middle of January, which means we're approaching February, which is, some people would say, the start of the growing season. For me, in Canada, it is sort of, to me, the end of winter. We usually have our worse snow and cold and stuff in winter, but I just kind of want to get the plants as ready to see how much they'll grow this year as I can, because this will be my first complete growing year with so many plants. I'm just kind of hoping it all works out. This leaf is really dirty. The trick is to be gentle and also to do both sides of the leaf, but I'm also being a little bit of a hypocrite in saying that because every time I have ever tried to whoop, clean my Monstera Ginny, I end up um, wrecking the leaves. So, take my advice with a little grain of salt. Yeah, see? Well, that one already had a rip, so that's not my fault. It's only sort of my fault. Oh, this leaf must have been already on the way out for me to just touch it and it to come off like that. Hey, it actually landed in the garbage. Honestly, I use vinegar and water. Like, I, it took me a long time to get over how much I hate the smell of vinegar. But because it's a, also like a reptile safe cleaner, I use it on Roger's glass. I just feel like it's a really handy cleaner. I'm going to grab the other thing, if you will. Okay, so I bought these little gardening tools off of Shein. 
and they're really cute, and they're actually metal, so we're going to use them today. And I'm going to use it to help me get this plant out, because I am a goof, and I did water this the other day, even though I knew I was doing this. So we're just going to spill all the dirt into my container here. So for this one vine, this is all the roots it's going to have. So I am just going to get all the dirt out of this container. Maybe I can use it, maybe I can't. All I know is I want both of these plants in a terracotta pot with better drainage than they currently have. And this is the pot this plant came to me from the Studio Foliage in, so I've never seen what it looks like. But it's been a couple of weeks since I last watered it. Let's see. It still feels pretty damp for the fact that I haven't watered it in a while. It just fell right out of there. Okay, so I don't need to like bare root it, which is when you take all the dirt off, like all of the dirt off the roots, but I would like to break it up just a little bit. So we're gonna give it some nice new dirt. Oh, I just got dirt all over my floor because I was not thinking. So this is the dirt that I bought from Studio Foliage at the same time. Um, I just like it. So we're just gonna use my little my little shovel, put some in the bottom. Woo! So one of the reasons that we're doing this is because I don't want this to be floppy anymore. I want it to be able to like stand up, you know, take care of itself. Now here's the other little planty. Woo! So I have them both in there. Nope. <laughs> now I have everybody in there. <laughs> so we're just going to start scooping up some dirt. I'm not putting it directly on the leaves, I can't see. And we're going to be gentle, but also forceful. I wish this little shovel thing, trowel, whatever you want to call it, had more of a dip to it. It's pretty flat. Get in there. Dum dum. I'm also glad because this cutting, this piece that I got from Tails and Scales, um, the pot that I put it in didn't have any drainage. So I was always afraid I was overwatering it. I mean, obviously it lived. That package that I bought this singular vine in did come with three vines, and I obviously killed the other two. But I am glad that at least one survived. That was like, out of all the plants I bought that day at that Reptile Expo, this is the only one I have still. Like, don't really get in there and really push, but you're just gonna want to lightly pack the dirt in. Like, think light thoughts. There, my repotted Philodendron Brazil. I like it, and I just like the look of terracotta pots personally, honestly. Um, I think it looks better in this pot. Hopefully they will behave in this pot, both the original cutting and the original plant. Some of that soil was pretty damp still. Um, I'm not going to water it. I'm just going to put it back, and then maybe in a couple of days I'll water it. So, like, going back here, it'll be in this corner, and I'm going to make the stubbier side face the way. Okay, so welcome to Friday morning. Um, the first of two plant orders that I'm expecting today came today. Um, so we're going to go through them. I also just wanted you to see that I'm wearing a matching planty pajama set that I bought from Shein. And I think it's very cute. I would just wear this shirt as like a regular shirt, but I wore it because of this plant. So this first order is from a place that I've never ordered from before. They're called, I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to say Piante. 
because it's P-I-A-N-T-E, plants, and they shipped. That was mainly the main reason I bought, and they had a pitcher plant, which Alyssa really wanted. So only two plants in this box are for me. The other two plants, one's for my sister, one's for Alyssa. Um, so we're just going to open it. I'm a little worried because it's been in transit for a couple of days, and I'm not going to open it on camera. I'll just come over here and show you the plants because they're... The, my address is really big on the front of the box. Um, and then the second order that I'm waiting for today is from the watering can, which is where I always get plants from. So the new plants from the new place that I've never ordered from are going to go in, like, quarantine. I'll put them over there where the dead ficus elastica used to be. Um, but I might just put the watering can plants immediately over here. I'll check them for pests. But, I mean, I'm always ordering plants from the same place. So I kind of trust them, you know? You know what? I changed my mind and I want you over here. Because this box is really cool. So when you open this box, it's actually really neatly set up. Like, so that everything is great. So they give you this little thingy here. I'm sure, this is like my shipping thing. Remove your plant from its packaging. Let's give your plant a new home. Remove your plant's care guide included in the package. And then tag them on Instagram. Me. They give you a little care guide for each plant. So, I really don't know how to get some of these out. Okay, so I'm not going to open this one because it looks to be Alyssa's pitcher plant. Um, I can see a little pitcher right there. Lena, that's not sturdy. Don't jump on that. It looks to be that's a pitcher right there. So I'm not going to open it. I'll save it for her. I really like how the package it to keep the humidity in. My camera is really, truly... I have to bring you lower so that... There we go. So, like I was saying, this is the pitcher plant. Um, I can see a little pitcher right here. And Lena is extremely interested. So I can see a little pitcher right... She's going to jump off my computer. Right there. Um, so I'm not going to open this because it's not for me. Um... But this is a pitcher plant. Look, they even have a new baby one going. I'm excited for that one for Alyssa because I know she really wanted a pitcher plant for a while. Like, can you chill? Oh, I didn't even see this. There's a little handwritten note. And there's like, and not like a special ear plant. Oh, I want to order from this place again. There's a little handwritten note with a free air plant in here somewhere. This must be the heat pack that was in here to keep the pitcher plant warm. It's completely not warm anymore. Oh, the cards slide up. I'm, I'm assuming both of these are for me, so we're going to open this. Oh, look. So they packed both little plants in this bigger pot to keep them safe. That's so smart. So this is my little aloe vera that I bought. Because I don't have an aloe vera, and I feel like every plant person should have an aloe. And then this is my little tiny baby string of string of pearls, that's what they're called. So to the person who commented that they wanted to know how my string of pearls were doing and that they were invested, um, I have a new one. <laughs> so let's hope, hopefully I won't kill this one, you know? In a nice big pot too. Maybe it's gonna have a plant that big. And then the last plant in here is my ZZ plant for Sam. Let's see if that ever look at it because I know she won't mind. Now this heat pack still feels warm. So this is Sam's little ZZ plant. I'm not going to take it completely out because it's got nice moss in there to help keep it moist and everything. Her ZZ plant's fuller than mine is. Um, but this is her little ZZ plant. I'm looking forward to giving it to her. I'll probably see her today. So yeah. Okay, I've officially decided they put the card saying they gave me a free air plant in there and didn't put the free air plant in there. That's okay. I don't need an air plant. I killed every other one I've ever had. So but I do just think it's funny that they put the card in there and there's no air plant. <laughs> okay, so after the other package came, I took the string of pearls and the aloe and like took the moss out, took the top off, and then the other package came. So I'm gonna show you right now. This is from the place that I always buy plants from, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so I'm so excited about every plant in here to be honest with you. They're so like freshly watered and beautiful. Okay, so I'm terrible with peperomia, but I just couldn't resist this one. It's so beautiful and it was only five dollars. And peperomia should I just throw the other peperomia ripple out and put it there? This, I believe, is a Pylea. This is a Pylea Moon Valley or something like that. I just thought it looked so cool. I know exactly what this is going to go because it only needs medium light. So it's going to go in the corner where my coffee plant used to be. Woo! I've always wanted this kind of Miranda with the, um, the, 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 the pink drainage. I just think they're beautiful. Medium. Moderate. 
For best results, fertilize regularly with tropical plant fertilizer. Thanks for the help, bud. Ooh, there's a new leaf coming up. And then the last one in this is a... Used to be very popular on the internet. It isn't anymore, but I still think it's beautiful. This is a philodendron birkin. Um, it says $14, but it was only 5 So, like, how could I resist? And they look so basic, but I just think they're so pretty. So this one's going to go on the bottom with my other philodendrons and pocos. You know what, why don't I just turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so philodendron birkin's going to go on the bottom. I'll move Ivy. But you know what? in the back. So that's good. And I'm going to put you both in the back corner, actually. So maybe you'll go in front. And then the Maranta will go in the back corner. This one to me looks a little weird. Like, it looked like it was watered weird. But we'll give it a couple days to, like, chill in my house and then we'll get rid of it. Get rid of the dirt, I mean. And then... I mean... At what point do we just give up? You know, like, some point... Sometimes you just have to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> we'll just... Okay, so now I have space for the peppermint. leaves coming up. Okay, so we're, you're going to end up in a highlight spot. I hope you're okay with that. And there. Look, nobody will ever know. All of the plants have been added. And so yeah, that's pretty much how my plant collection is looking now. Um, eventually I want to get a little hanging basket like this for my string of pearls over here. Maybe if I actually end up killing this baby tears plant and I just give up on her, I'll put it in that one. But I really want a hanging um, basket for the string of pearls. I think that was one of my issues last time is I didn't have a hanging basket. But right now the string of pearls and the aloe vera, because I don't know that cellar, that Piante place, as well as I know the watering can. It's really dark over here um, on camera, not in real life. Um, I just, I don't know that I trust them immediately to put them over with my regular plants, but I do trust the watering can. So that's why all those new plants are just immediately added. And my little urban jungle is new again. And so yeah, anyway, I guess that's it for this planty update. Sort of take you through my haul, show you what I've killed. Um, <laughs> that sort of thing video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more plant content or if you just want me to stick to something else. Because um, I really do enjoy making videos about my plants. I just don't usually have much to say. Because they're either doing good or they're dead. So, <laughs> you know how it is. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already, and I will see you in the next video.